What's up, guys, and welcome back to episode of Detective Butler, Maiden Voyage Murder. I don't know why I say Butler like that, but I do. Um, now we're gonna get right into this game, and last time we found out we're gonna be doing a murder. Well, I mean, we're already in a murder, but we're gonna be investigating it. Ah, uh, go. Butler awoke to find himself in the ship's infirmatory. According to the clock on the wall, the time had just passed seven. That meant he'd been here at least five hours, although he didn't remember a second of it. He moaned to himself after waking up, but it was enough to stir the nurse nearby. She turned around, looking in her spinning chair, and as expected, saw the detective sitting upright. Oh, you're awake. That's faster than I expected. I've had worse happen to me. Head starts a little, but my stomach's killing me. <laughs> hmm, it's past dinner time, after all. I'll order some food to be delivered here. Please wait. Then he sends over to the telephone, seeing our desk picking it up. Hmm, sounds good. I feel like I missed out on so much. How long was I out for? Five hours? Something like that, yes. The nurse began to speak into the phone, ordering a quick meal for her patient. Balor sat back and suddenly watched, thinking to himself. Why was his head hurting so much? Didn't something happen earlier today? That's right. During a tour of the ship's basement, he was knocked out. The lights went off for a few moments, but it was long enough for someone to attack him. Had it really been the work of ghosts haunting the basement, or was it someone who had a reason to go after him? He had to investigate this further. But his starving pain wasn't f foreign. But this starving pain wasn't foreign to Butler. While he could recall the events of today quite easily, everything that happened before a certain time he simply couldn't be recalled. In other words, it was easy for Butler to forget the past. That was a skill many people had longed for. Their past tainted with bad memories they'd rather forgot completely. However... This detective, as a way to remember his own name, resorted to the most classic of all mystery tropes. Surely he had read so many books they'd never forget the most likely suspect of a crime. That was a secret, at least one of many. It was the only secret you remember, so it was the only secret worth hiding. Well, how long till the food gets here? I'm sorry, but it seems there's an emergency you need to take care of. It should be here in a half an hour. Don't go anywhere. Emergency? What happened? I don't want you to panic. However, I need to be in the scene right away. The nurse ran off in a hurry, leaving Butler inside the room alone. Butler stood up from his seat. He retrieved his coat and hat from the coat rack and put them both back on. Half an hour. I'd rather walk to the place myself. But this emergency has me interested. Deciding he has better uses of his time and simply waiting around, Butler left the room and attempted to follow the nurse. And that's when he heard the screams coming from the elevator. I see, so that's what happened to you. Yep, and now you've told me your side of the story, I guess we're all caught up. Butler and Cecilia were stayed with me outside in the hall. Everyone else had returned to their rooms by now, including Captain Jack. Although they might be complacent waiting around for the ship to dock and the police to solve the crime i'm not so patient and detective butler couldn't be more excited to solve a real mystery sure you ready the truth we might uncover might not be so pleasant yeah i'm ready there's no other choice cecilia the door right here it goes the door's magnet releases itself and cecilia swipes her key card this is it our search for truth begins here. Butler leads the way, so Silo and myself following close behind. He stands in the center of the room between the two beds, looking in all directions. First, I'll do a quick search of the guest of this guest room. Gotta check for suspicious things lying around, or perhaps a way to sneak the key into the room from the outside. Tell me, where exactly did you find the key in here? Blythe found the key in the middle of that bed. I point to where my father slept in on the left side of the room. Hmm. So the key was slipped in through the door. It involves some string trick. You don't remember seeing any strings slip in your room, do you? No, there wasn't any. So I guess the possibility of the key being slipped under the door is ruled out. But there are some other places it can slip through, yeah? Such as a ceiling? Even a small hole would be enough. While cleaning today, I personally checked the walls, floors, and ceiling of each room thoroughly. I found nothing unusual about the places. That, 
that is, unless the culprit made the hole in themselves. They could have been standing right above this room, drilled a hole into the floor, and dropped the key down through the hole. Did the culprit really go that far? I mean, bringing a power drill to a cruise ship? Hold it! That wouldn't work either. Power drills would be considered a safety hazard, so the crew would have constantly that upon sight. Then tell me, are there any power drills hidden on the ship? Perhaps there's one in the employee room? I think we might be overthinking this. I mean, let's just look up the ceiling. Three of us look up at the ceiling, the truth becomes clear. This really isn't a single hole up there. Well, in that case, no one could have stolen onto Silas' key to use the main room door. Which only leaves the balcony. Which is what I was saying before the last video. So Silas opens the balcony door and steps out of the room. She points across to one of the neighboring balconies. You think the culprit jumped across this gap? I'm not sure how anyone could jump across it. It's not humanly possible. The culprit just needs some rope. Then they could swim across using the rope as a grappling hook. Even I can't believe something like that. It'd have to be a ninja or something. Is there not an easier way? Hmm, an easier way. She has legs both hanging from up there. The culprit will lower themselves into one of those and use it to enter the balcony. The lifeboat? And how would they get it back up there once they finished? Don't know, but I don't have to explain because it's possible. Are you risk suggesting that the culprit would go through this much trouble just to place a key in my room? And if that's true, there's still one other problem. The balcony door was locked. Hmm. Pick locking? Not good, but if someone left it open beforehand. You mean me? Or my father? Doesn't matter who. Someone happens to leave this door open either by accident or on purpose. No, then the culprit would have to know in advance the door was open. Hmm. Ramp theories aren't getting us anywhere. I can't see how we're solving anything at this rate. Brother walks back into the room, both of us following. I shut and lock the balcony door on my way inside. We're eliminating some possibilities one by one. Now to really make sure that we covered all of our bases, let's check the bathroom in the closet. The bathroom looks exactly like it did after you took a shower this morning. Seems a culprit didn't enter this room. There's nothing interesting in the closet either, just my father's clothes. So in other words, we haven't found a single clue in this whole room. The good news is that we eliminate a lot of possibilities. I don't think this room was in any way damaged, nor did the key slip through the outside. And lastly, the balcony door wasn't used. That's a lot of things we know didn't happen, but we're so sure on things we know that did happen. What do we do now? Oh, it's room service here already? I wish we should take a break to eat. <laughs> I can't think on an empty stomach. You ordered room service? When did you have time to do that? You know, I was lying in the hospital about all throughout dinner, right? Haven't eaten anything since the lunch. Brother opens the door, revealing a large service card decorated with food and drinks. Bandit stands at lunch of Donald Ackerley. Oh, hello there, you three. Surprised to see me? Hello, hey Donald. What are you doing bringing all the food all by yourself? I saw the order was for Gill Gilligan's room and thought I'd pay a visit to Galvano. Yeah, good luck with that. Galvano was found dead. Murdered, even. Hmm, that food looks good. Bella takes a piece of chicken from the plate serving card and begins to munch on it. Is that true? You shouldn't joke about these kind of things. Tell me it's not true, Gilligan. I don't want to believe it either, but that's what really happened. Slow down, old man. The food just got here. I'll give you a rundown on the murder in a bit. Bon appetit! Butler starts grabbing food off the serving cart, although the rest of us aren't too quick to do the same. It's as if the murderer... Murder... I can't even read. Murder hasn't even phased him. He has mentioned before that the only reason he's taking on this case is because it interests him. He even compared it to a game. Is that all he really wants? Well, I guess I shouldn't be complaining. There's no way I could solve a closed room murder like this on my own. I'm sorry to hear what happened. If there's anything I could do to assist the investigation, please do tell me. By the way, Cecilia, you dropped the cellular today. I mean, means to give it back to you. Donald takes you over from a pocket a key ring. Oh no, that's Jack's key ring, isn't it? Where did I lose it? Wait a minute, so you lost his key ring after all? I saw fall out of your pocket as you were leaving the laundry room around 3 o'clock today. 
you ran so quickly I couldn't catch up to you. And it could please slip my mind after when I'm calling you earlier. So you can have it back now. You know, that's interesting. So Cecilia left the key ring for left had, had the key ring from two AM to three PM. And Donald has the key ring up until right now. Donald, do you recall seeing the elevator key on that ring you found? Elevator key? I only saw the usual ones. No more keys than there normally should be. I mean, I hadn't taken any keys off the ring, so it must have been there when I found it. You two aren't making sense anymore. Then where did the key go? We know Jackson had yeah, the elevator key in his own key ring. Later that night around 2 a.m., Cecilia went to the Cecilia went to the captain's room. She was scolded and Jack gives her his key ring as a replacement, elevator key included. At 3 p.m., Cecilia accidentally drops the keys and Dunn picks it up immediately afterwards. She's confident she didn't lose the elevator key while she was cleaning, too. But according to Donald, he never saw the elevator key on the ring. So I had to be lying here, but I don't suspect either of these two. Cecilia and Donald both contradict each other. One of them might be lying to frame the other, and in this kind of situation where losing that key is equivalent to murder, anyone would do the same. Is there anything else we can do? I mean, we searched all the rooms and there wasn't anything too conclusive. And from what these two are saying, the story is making even less sense. Well, I won't worry too much about it. Let's see what the journal has. Cecilia. Last night, the captain gave her his own key. His own key ring as a replacement attached with was the elevator key. Apparently the key ring fell and left the laundry room and was picked up by Donald. He saw Cecilia drop Jack's key ring in the laundry room and picked it up, but couldn't reach her in time because of his bad legs. Jack's key ring. Donald says he found the key ring in the laundry room after witnessing Cecilia drop it there. Well, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Once we reach land and the police arrive, they'll take a look at the surveillance video and solve the crimes themselves. Wait a second. Yes, of course, that's it. The surveillance tapes. That's right. It's completely slipped my mind, but we could have put an end to the, all the confusion by watching the security video. It's all kept in the captain's room. Oh, did I let one of Jack's secrets slip out? Slip out? Ho ho ho. Good work, old man. Lead the way. Modern technology has made crime solving much e easier. DNA tracing, fingerprinting, surveillance cameras. All these are made available as public knowledge on internet sites and television shows. It might be better for society that we instantly catch criminals on CCTV screens the moment that a crime takes place. But it makes for boring detective fiction. For that reason, I can see why many people would rather read books taking place in the early 20th century before such technology was invented. Our world has made detective fiction obsolete. I'll also do this chapter too because that was a really short chapter. The captain's room is located on the sixth deck. So in order to get there, one must first climb the stairs to the outside. Fortunately for us, there isn't any rain, but the dark clouds are still ominously looming above. Gilligan, I'm sorry about your father. If it weren't for that darn key. It's not your fault, Donald. You couldn't have known that someone might have used it to kill. Your father was a good man, Gilligan, and it's a damn shame he's gone now. Don't tell any don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I've heard that from him that you two were good friends, so I believe you. Ah, uh, yes. The chain I worked at was an affiliate of his company. So whenever he had to fly out somewhere, he struck a deal with us and get some free food. That stupid company. The whole reason he even went on this cruise. If not for that, he'd still be alive. Please don't try to think about too much about it. That's what Butler is for. Yeah. The video won't lie to us. Even if it solves it. I'm sorry. I'm regretting a lot of things I said to my father. It's too late to take anything back, though. Nonsense. Wherever he is now, Gavada must be watching. Don't be afraid of the future. Are we there yet? Up those stairs, the room's a bit bigger than usual with all the remodeling done. 
Moving the room to an upper level was necessary. The lower level is all outdated, and I'd rather not destroy my grandfather's room. A seventh floor? Or is that just one room? Only that room technically could call it a seventh floor, but there's not really any point with any other rooms. Whatever. Let's just get them to show on the road. One by one, we climb the stairs. At the top, down, takes out his personal key ring and locks the door. The moment the four of us up in the room, we see Captain Jack sit up out of his chair. Apparently, he had been expecting us. What the? Who let all of you in here? I brought them here so they can review the security cameras. You did have them turned on, didn't you? Of course I did. But isn't the job for the police to handle? I already forget. I'm a journalist. I want access to all information I can get. Please. What happens if another person dies because we're too easygoing? I don't want to take that chance. The boy's got a point. You'd help him out, won't you, Jack? Very well, then. Over here. The inside, as I expected, quite large. It looks like his room is actually split into two other smaller rooms. Their doors are both open, and from what I can see inside, they're mainly his own bedroom and bathroom. Most notably, the rooms contain a control desk, its keyboards and monitors taking up half the room's space. Surrounding the desks are two glasses, glass windows, from which the sixth desk is visible. Jack looks onto the control desk, pressing only a few among hundreds of buttons. I can see where various areas displayed of each of the screens in front of me. There is even a camera placed in this room watching us. Top notch security right here. There we go. This is the ship's security system. As you can see, there is camera placed in every room on every deck, with the exception of the guest room, so it would be an invasion of privacy, otherwise conflicting with state laws. Gotcha. So let's see what happened in the elevator. The elevator doesn't have a camera. I was made in 1962. Hmm, I see. Guess when you look at the camera in the hallway. It might be a good start, but what time? How inconvenient. Just check everything. If you're just going to complain, we can stop detect playing detective right now. Elevators have multiple doors, so even if we check one hallway, we still need to check the others. But we don't have any places to start. There has to be a way. Maybe we should focus on my room instead? When a key card is swept through the guest room door, a time step is recorded. I could check those instances if you prefer. That's quite helpful info you've been withholding, Captain Jackass. Yes, do that. <laughs> Jack presses a few more buttons. The screen changes to display a list of times 1355, 1910, 1930, and 2020. Fortunately, a security system will tell us when a person leaves the room. So it seems like Violet left his room this morning, he never went back. I recognize the last three timestamps. Once to enter the room when we found the elevator key, and once I went back inside of my own room. And the last time was when he carried out your investigation. So aside from the last three, the one mystery timestamp at 2 p.m. That would have been me. Jack, rewind the video to the first timestamp. Let it play out. And to Sila, explain what you're doing in the room. I want every detail. The silent sets her cleaning trolley a few doors down. She takes out a master key card and locks the door to my room. For the ten minutes of nothing happening, the camera shows me wandering over to my room, only to find a lock. I check my pockets and decide to head out to find my father. Five minutes later, Cecilia comes back out of the room. She takes the trolley away and the door closes shut. Right. Part of her job to clean all the passengers' cabins on her assigned deck. So around this time, I was over at room five to room 503. I remember the last time I had my key ring was in Gilligan's room. I probably left it inside by accident. So this time I tried something different. I was very careful when cleaning. First the main bedroom, then the bathroom, and then the balcony. The whole time I knew where the key ring was. It stayed in my pocket the whole time. After leaving each room, I made sure to check. I see. So unless you're lying, you had the keys on you the whole time. Right! And I'm not lying. Sure, and after you clean all the rooms, where'd you go next? Once I finished cleaning the room, they took the trolley to the laundry room downstairs. It must have been where Donald saw me lose the key ring, but I didn't notice him at the time. The 
Hopper stealthily removed the elevator key from the key ring. Why don't you just take the whole thing? It doesn't really add up. Although it's possible, I don't remember the call with taking keys though. I had them in my pocket the whole time, I'm sure. The simplest explanation is to still place the key yourself. You had the perfect opportunity when she's cleaning the room. No, no way! I'm not lying, I didn't lose anything this time. I'm telling you. Then why don't I see the key? I know I'm getting old, but my vision is still 2020. But S Silas' testimony tells us nothing new, only adding more questions. Regardless, it seems we have some good progress. Let's review everything we've learned. Oh, sorry, it's just a silence. They had to knew she went to my room to clean. She claimed you didn't place the key inside then, but considering the circumstances, no one else could have. Uh, key meeting in room at 1.30, 7.10, 7.30, 8.20, and where only times the door has been opened by the key. That's nice as Sila goes to the captain's room and tells Jack she needs a placement set. He gives her his own key ring. The next day, she walks around to each room on the fifth deck to clean them. She keeps the set of keys in her pockets so everyone's accidentally used them inside the rooms. When she finishes cleaning, she takes the trolley away to the laundry room on the first deck. Don sees her accidentally drop the keys, but is unable to catch up with her in time. So we hold on to the key ring up until now. You can see only saw the usual number of keys in the ring, meaning the elevator key was never on it. Furthermore, even if Sasaya's key card key had been stolen, it was only used on the door. And the video proves that Sasaya left the room and closed the door closed shut. So the closed room is locked even tighter than before. This isn't going good. Nothing is going on anymore. So are we stuck now? Are there any clues that can tell us what happened next? Yeah, no leads whatsoever. So it's just old-fashioned way. Or what's the old-fashioned way? The detective's ironclad rule that everyone should be treated as a suspect. Father rule all the way through. I need alibis from all of you. I need to go visit the three company members, search their rooms for clues. Let's go. Woke up at 9 a.m., went to the dining hall for breakfast, then decided to walk around the ship. There's a real lot of stuff you can do here. I ate lunch with Elias at the dining hall around noon. On our way out, we bumped into Blythe. She told us about the ghost tour, so we thought it would be good, fun to go see it. Elias had not so much. After the ghost tour, the two of us split up. I went outside to the sun deck and going in and talked to me around 2 p.m. An hour later, the weather was turning bad, so I turned to my room. I remained there until 6. Well, I got up around 9.30. Well, at noon, I ate lunch with Howard, but thought it was odd that Galvano hadn't shown up. Tried calling Galvano, but there's no service out here. Seriously? Anyway, we saw Blythe as we were leaving, but I didn't want to get involved with her. I returned to my room, hoping Galvano would show up, but he never did. Around 2 p.m., I decided to go to the bar and see if Govana was there. So I found Blythe, and we soon, and soon enough, Gilligan showed up. After that, I returned to my room from 4 to, till 6. Like, I felt quite sick this morning, so I stayed in bed until around 10 a.m. I remained there until about 12.30, which is simply I went to, to the dining hall to eat lunch. I went to meet Howard and Eliza as they left the dining hall. I told them about the ghost tour and Howard was up for the idea. That and some extra food. Eliza refused my offer. After the ghost tour, I went to the bar where I saw Eliza. Gilligan also came to the bar and we talked for about an hour. The three of us eventually split up and I stayed in a room till 6. I woke up at 6 a.m., remaining in room until 12 noon. That's when I began to prepare the first ghost tour of the day. Around 1 p.m., I bumped into Gilligan and Butler, who I invited to join. Butler fell due to an accident, and my men took him to the infirmary. I then returned to the captain's room until it was time for another tour at 2. I continued to give tours of the entry room periodically throughout the day. Finally, around 5 p.m., I arrived at the dining hall to prepare for the banquet. I wanted to make the ship's maiden voyage memorable, and I had everything set up. But just after 7, I received a call from Mrs. Sila. It was when I arrived at the crime scene. The 
and woke up around 7 a.m. To that, I went straight to the dining hall and began serving breakfast. I continued to work there until I suffered quite a burn and went to the infirmary around 1. After I was preparing for dinner around 3, I saw Cecilia lose Jack's keys ring on the first deck. Couldn't quite catch up with her in time, so I picked it up with the intent to give it back to her later. I continued preparations into her room until 4, then I worked in the dining hall in the kitchen from 4 onward. Then Butler ordered room ser Then when Butler ordered room service for getting a room, I thought I would pay them a visit. Um, I think I got up at seven. Who knows many rooms as I could early this morning. Went to work at the bar until Butler and Gilligan showed up around one p.m. After they left, I decided to make my second round of cleaning. Finished cleaning each room by two thirty. Took the trolley down to the laundry room around three and returned working to the bar. Nothing much happened there. Donald called me on his walkie-talkie around seven. Came to Dang Hall as we grew. As a group, we discovered Mr. Golder's dead body in the elevator. Soon after, I received the message that the cat. I messaged the captain for assistance. Okay. I can smell the discrepancies. At the end of the Butler's interrogation session, the cap, the lights in the captain's room go out. This certainly isn't the first time, but I shouldn't have to worry. After all, the lights come, always come back on, right? Oh, uh, it's so dark. Him to woken up in the to me with blight. Attend the ghost tour after going outside at two. He remained in his room until dinner. Woke up at nine thirty and had lunch at noon. Okay. She then went back to her room for two hours and met with blight at the bar. Going back to her room until dinner. Woke up at ten. At lunch at twelve thirty. She joined Howard for the ghost tour and met up with Eliza. So she remained in her room till 6. Jack claims to have given tours from 1 to 5, hosting the banquet at the dining hall. The closet filled with clothing, the bathroom contained all sorts of makeup, supplies, and feminine products. I found a stuffed animal on her bed, which resembles an alpaca. In good condition. Various jewelry scattered across the room, cell phone charger bumping to the wall. Balcony floor, balcony door found unlocked, nothing strange outside. Brought a small mirror in perfect condition. Auditory. Found several books, mostly science fiction. Found remains of some food below the bed, as if from root service. Also found the broken pocket watch in the same area. The hands were at noon exactly. Nothing unusual about the room or the doors, although one light in the bathroom doesn't work properly. A spare pair of glasses was found inside of the drawer near the bedroom bed in good condition. Plus inventory. Didn't bring much luggage, luggage, various feminine products in the bathroom. Sitting on the table in the collection of trading cards, found a receipt from the bar last night where back at 12 or 7 a.m. Cashier Cecilia and a receipt from the gift shop purchased super rare cards at 11.25. Um, room was very clean, although her, brought her personal laptop with her. It's the ghost curse! What the hell's going on, Jack? I, I have no idea. My control desk isn't even responding. Power was out all over the ship. Are we going to make it to land now? Without any electricity, it won't be going anywhere. Is there any way to restore the ship's power? Maybe a backup generator? Yes, there's a backup generator. That's all I can really bet on at this point. It should be enough to get us back to land, but we need so someone to go down to the engine room and turn it on. That means you, Cecilia. Understood. Sister salutes the captain and rushes to the door. The detective grabs the side of his arm, stabbing her in her tracks. Hold up. You're still a suspect. You look in town along and watch her carefully. What? Why me? As I said, she's a suspect, so I can't just let her walk away. And I've already done enough running around for one day. Ugh, alright. Let's go. Yeah. I think you'll need these. But it throws the size metal key ring towards her. Some fumbles around to try to catch it, but it lands on the floor as she picks it up. But my keys! Where did you... Save it for later. You two better get to the engines running. Uh, okay. Maybe it's better if you look and hold on to these. Sure. She hands me the keys, which I shove inside my pocket. Just don't take too long. And if Gilligan... And Gilligan, make sure you keep an eye on her at all times. Right. We won't let you down.
Well, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe for more videos like this one. I really am enjoying this game at, so far, so um, I'm really excited to play more. But, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.